And here is another example. I skipped the first moves because they are theoretical. Here white played h3, preparing a bishop's development. Black replied rook e8, bishop e3, here black plays a5. Right now these all are theoretical moves. But nevertheless, let's think about them. White develops his pieces step by step. While black makes a lot of pawn moves and rook moves, so it already means that there is something a bit dubious in the black strategy. Ok, let's move on. Queen c2, a4, rook d1. Still we can see the same situation. White gradually brings his pieces into the game, while black, well, tries to use some tactical tricks, like on the previous move, white can take the pawn because instead of rook d1, because black will take e takes and then will take the pawn on the e4. So black cares about some tactical tricks instead of trying to think strategically and trying to understand what generally he should do. Okay, now after rook d1 he played queen a5, then rook b1, here black took e takes d4. Well, I guess black player did these moves unthinkingly, just because this is a well-known idea. Bronstein played this 50 years ago, so modern players can just repeat the ideas of old masters. However, there is a huge problem here. You cannot play chess unthinkingly. So when Bernstein played these moves, he understood what he, di what he did. Well, modern players just repeat them. Without understanding that the move e takes d4 gives up a center, which is a strategical mistake. Usually we need to keep the center. And not allow our opponent to get a big advantage here. Ok, knight d4, knight c5. This actually provokes white to play b4, and white will definitely do it. Now black is hoping to attack white somehow after queen b4 and then maybe attack the b3 weakness. So again, black is trying to create an attacking position without enough strategical reasons. White has an advantage in the center, all the white's pieces are active, so the black's attacking attempts will not be dangerous for white. Quite the contrary, right now black uses a queen to blockade the white's pawn. As we know, this is a mistake. Queen is a bad blocker because it can be easily attacked. For example, white can attack it by knight a2. It doesn't work right now because after the queen move, the e4 pawn is hanging. But well, this is a temporary factor. Such tactical tricks cannot help black always. White played bishop f4, attacking the d6 pawn, bishop f8, now bishop d2. We already can see that black has some problems because of the wrong piece on the blockade square. Queen b6, now bishop e3. White again opposes his bishop to the black's queen. Queen b4. And here white played queen d2. White found another way how to disturb the black's queen. Now white is going to go knight c2, attack the queen and when it goes away to push b4 pushing all the black pieces backward and getting a strategically winning position. Black played queen b6, but now white can play b4 right away, which gives white a force and win. In this variation after queen d3, white is taking the knight, and when black solves this problem somehow, white will play knight e6, taking the queen, and after the queen move, white can go knight c7, attacking everything and getting a decisive material advantage. A general conclusion from this lesson is pretty simple. Create a position where your opponent has no direct attacking moves. Create a strategical position where he needs to think strategically and understand the situation. In such case, your opponent will don't know what to do and you will win the game easily.